Hello fans, welcome back to my part 2 of the cave series. Make sure you like and subscribe for my new videos and updates. On my live stream with Taran, his 1506 theory stated, The Beothuk painted themselves in red ochres, thought to be the origin of the offensive term, Red Indians, as with the red stick figures in the cave paintings. Sea Monster, which the showrunners represent as a native Newfoundland lion's main jellyfish, which are red in color. Also, on YouTube, there are some comments from Native Americans that it's an ancient star person. In the next room, we see the creature sleeping chamber number one, where we see random objects like a suitcase, bike, a few chairs, and a grandfather clock besides a few creatures sleeping. Why are these objects here? Do they mean something to the creatures? I came across a video on Parkland Media that had a theory that all these things were in the cave because they were how the creatures assimilated to catching humans. They evolved from rats, and just like rats, they harborage and pack things like a pack rat. It could be all these things in there are not real, but fakes or copies of other things in the town. The main indicator of that is the grandfather clock. The clock in the caves looks the same as the clock in the colony house. Check out my video on the clocks for more time connections. We see Tabitha and Victor make it out of the caves. Then, later Tabitha has a conversation with Jade in Season 2 and tells him she has seen this symbol before. She takes Jade to the caves and we see a low overhead opening in the side of a hill with seemingly water dripping over the entrance. In my video, The Brundles, I talked about water and how there are witches that use water to draw power from. Could this be a connection? Even though we see water dripping over the entrance, there is no sign of water inside the cave or flowing into the cave from the water dripping over the entrance. Jade enters the cave and enters another compartment, different than the one we saw with Tabitha and Victor with the drawings, but the same as the room with small cells. The only difference is Tabitha didn't see any sacrificial altars. When Jade enters the area, it's the area with the small cages in the wall, and instead of a large, open, empty room, there are seven sacrificial altars and then seven children on the altars. Looking towards the ceiling and there, we see at the symbol. The symbol looks like three trees intersecting across the middle covered in vines. The symbol does not seem to be glowing. Now we didn't see above the hole to see where the vines or trees go, or if they connect to anything like the colony house or residence. The hole could be a landing zone for all you alien theorists out there. Or the kids, who didn't seem to be strapped down even though they were being held in cages, could be using their collective consciousness to manifest the otherworldly supernatural occurrences. What Jade saw was a vision and the kids were not actually there. Neither were the stones. Where did they go? When the kids were there, could the kids only be used to bring in residents to this place either in the past or even the future? There are some other Reddit and Facebook theories that state there is actually another stone altar depicted in the cave drawing. The eighth spirit child is the boy in white. Near this eighth altar in the cave drawings, there are two figures of people, along with the ten near the seven altars making twelve. There are twelve talismans. All talismans have not been revealed in any episodes, but told in a season one interview with the showrunner stating, There are twelve talismans and each are unique, not identical, and each will be specifically important to a character. The altar, apart from the seven, if boy in white, the two people represented may be the two that escaped. Could these two be the prophecy of Tabitha and Eloise? When Jade enters the cave, he enters the sacrificial altar room also where the ghoulish kid's cells are, and the larger room is empty with a light beaming down from above. Then all of a sudden he sees seven empty altars and looks up and sees what he's been looking for, the symbol. Watchers realize this was a vision of an altar and ghoulish kids were not real. This could have been a vision from the past or future. The ghoulish kids did not look like a child version of anyone in the town, and laying on the table they weren't tied down or restrained. 
So were they doing this voluntarily? Did someone put them there, or did they come there on their own to do this ritual? If so, where did they learn it, and if someone put it them there, who was it? The boy in white, or someone unseen? We don't know. Will the caves play a major part of season three? Will we find out who are the ghoulish kids and what the cave painting mean, especially the giant red figure? We'd love to know what you think so as always. Let's discuss in the comments. On behalf of the Movie Guru and Movie Guru Media, thank you for watching this video and we will see you on the next edition.